Okay, so before we start uh, the session, we'll just give you some more updates. Uh, the, uh, our training programs for 2022 are ready basically, and i like to share with you the dates. We are going uh, to start on January 6th. Uh, there will be weekly uh, sessions, QA sessions. On February 8th, we're starting with training sessions. So the Q&A and live training are separated. There will be training for administrators, people that like to administer the systems, probably most of you out there. And also there will be training for employees, people that just need to use the system. And that's something that we, we didn't do a good job with it in the last four years. We got massive amount of business owners complaining that they know how to use the system, but the employees don't know how to, to use it. And therefore, their investment is, is basically going to the, to the uh, garbage. So we created completely different training sessions. We worked on it all, uh, during 2021. So January 6th, QA sessions uh, will start on a weekly basis, February 8th. Uh, we're starting with a live training for administrators. It's 1 p.m. Eastern daytime, 2 p.m. Eastern, we'll start the employees. On the 15th, we're going to release a mobile application for business owners, okay? It will not, won't be any interest to anyone that is not a business owner. Um, we're going to have, uh, for the admin training, we're starting with the loose scripting for non-developers. It's for business owners, managers, people that like to use Deluge, learn how to work with Deluge uh, without going to the complicated things. Also, here we spend lots of time to try to break it to pieces so it won't be overwhelming. I think we did a good job uh, here. Uh, once we finish the Deluge scripting, we jump into Zoho campaigns. That will be for another month or two. And then we'll continue to more uh, courses, the main courses. The, the idea is to cover uh, most of the ZO one apps. That's the goal eventually. Um, but to do it with a mix of live training and recorded sessions, because we see that the recorded sessions are not enough. People still have questions. Uh, the employee will start with ZO CRM for employees. We'll run it for from February until April. And then we're jumping to Zoho campaigns for employees, how to send emails and so on. And those are the news. I'm going to share with you a link to this landing page. Uh, it's, uh, it's all the details here. If you click on get it now, you will not get it. It will just send you to a Zoho forum because um, the way that our subscription system works is that when you click on it, you need to pay and the subscription starts. And there is no point of starting now when the program didn't start really. So on January, uh, January 1st, we are going to release uh, discounted rates for the entire January month, because in January, uh, you will have just some of the features of, of those programs. The live training will not be part of it. The rest will be, but the live training will not be part of it. So basically we give you like two, three months for free uh, because of it. So that will be on January, February 1st, we're going to normal prices. I will share with you right now the link uh, to this page. So it's in the chat. And if someone wants, uh, just fill the form and then we'll basically let you know when we are ready with it. And it should be around January 1st. That's it. Those were the news for today. Good morning. Hello, how are you, Mr. Jordan? I'm doing well, and yourself? Awesome. Waiting for the holiday. <laughs> so I am. Uh, I have an external party who has their own Click account, and we set up a, an external channel, and they do decoration for us. And we had been communicating via email, but what we were finding is the communication just gets all over the place, whether it be a, a new thread gets started in an email, so my thought was, could we use a click channel? And every time we create a new deal, we would create a thread with that name within that channel. And then any updates we would push to that thread. 
And I know with messages, you have that message, uh, there, sorry, with channels, you have the channel ID, so you can push messages there. Do you know if there's a way within a channel to identify a thread and push all the messages to within that thread? It's a very good question. Uh, let's see. So uh, I, I push to specific uh, uh, channels, not to threads. So click API. So let's see what's going on here. So that will be channels. Inside of channel, creating a channel, retrieve a channel. channel. Mm, I would try to play with those APIs and see what's going on. I don't have experience with it. Yeah, I looked under messages and chat and I didn't see anything there either. And now what I did notice is if you go into a, a thread, there is a, you can share a link to a thread. So there is some unique identifier within Click. I just don't know if there's any way using Deluge to uh, get access to that and then push to it. Not that I've seen. With, with Deluge is very simple. Uh, Deluge, so click, let me show you. I oh, know, yeah, so this is really all you need. Uh, let me go to an example. Yeah, so you have, you know, the command, you have the channel name, and you have the message and the CRM connection. Uh, I didn't see any added criteria for that. Okay. Yeah, sorry, man. No worries. Um, I guess if there's no other questions, do you have any other recommendations for how we can approach the conversation with our, our vendor? In terms of, is there a way from CRM? So basically I have a custom module. Every time we create a decoration job, we create a record within that custom module and we have workflows that push out messages to them along the, the blueprint. So is there a way, or do you have thoughts on what's the best way to keep everything together? Uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. you don't have five different emails on the same deal. The only thing that comes to my mind is when you're producing the email and it needs to be checked. And again, I'm just thinking loud. <clears throat> so let's say that this is the tem uh, it's a bad template. Good. So let's say that this is the template. <clears throat> I will always have here something like uh, identifier and that will be an identifier coming from the, uh, the deal itself. Yeah. And then to try somehow to group it like that, or maybe in the subject to have here the, the ID. Mm -hmm. uh, need to play with it. I don't have something that I, I already know. Um, usually the way that we function is uh, if we have communication with uh, vendors, we don't really track so much on the communication, when yeah. there is an important communication, we are going to the deal itself as an example, and we have in the notes only the bottom line. So the notes will not include everything and we never really check the emails or SMS, we don't care. When yeah. an incoming message comes in, it goes to desk, from desk there is a resolution area and we're pushing it as a note, as the bottom line. This is what's important about this communication. If it's something that we need to do, it's usually going to be a task that's going to close a different task. So if the task, for example, prepare drawings to the vendor, when this is closed, it automatically generate an email to the vendor. Hey, you know, we just finished that. 
And then there is a follow-up on our side to make sure that he actually received the message and is working on it. Yeah. So this is usually how we work, not, not the same way that you, you mentioned. So it's new for me. Yeah, I like that concept though of pushing the resolution to the notes. Resolution field is one that we actually don't use that often. Um, we're typically capturing a category of resolution in the classification field. Yeah, so you have here the, the resolution. So this is cool. And yeah. uh, you can also notify the contact, right? So he knows that the, the, the ticket is closed and what was done. Mm -hmm. Right, and also because you have a good experience with the coding, uh, you can also have here different type of uh, buttons. For example, you create here a check mark that will say push to CRM, mm -hmm. or update lead, or create a task, or or a, maybe a, a pick list that will do activities. And when you change them, it will initiate a workflow script push to CRM. Yeah, yeah, I actually have some of that already built out. Um for pushing to CRM. Whenever we have a new lead, it creates a new lead record and does all that stuff. But uh, I like those ideas. I like the resolution concept, pushing that out. Try to play with it. Okay. Thank okay, you. my friend. Thank you. Good morning, Leo. How are you? Good, sir. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to code today's date into an email template and we haven't really found a, an easy solution. Great question, we'll show you. So for the people that didn't try it, you will pull your air if you will try to do it. So you go here, you have your template, and here you're trying to have some kind of a variable of today's date, but you won't find it. And this is, I, I don't know if I, how much time I spent on trying to do it. So I, I, I do feel you, I, did you try lots of, like spend lots of time on it or it's a little bit of time? Uh, very little. I mean, it was obvious pretty quickly that there's no date fields, um, you know, for today's date. Let me show you what I found because I, I spent lots of time on it. And eventually I did something creative. So if you're going to the modules and fields, you can create a formula field and I will crawl it now. And that will be a date field. Now here on the bottom, you see you have something says now, it's a function, okay? Okay. That's all you need to do. And then you click on done and you save it. The okay. And so uh, my question would be, because you guys have done some customization and you have a section called automation, which is pretty much the section for extra fields. So that would yep. probably go in your automation section. Um, yep. And then uh, we will just pull that tag, calling it hashtag now or whatever, and it'll pop up and then we'll be able to do it. Yes, that will pull up the date. That's perfect. Thank you so much. No, no problem, Michael. Have a beautiful weekend. You too. Happy holidays. Or bay holidays, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Yes. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah. Hi. How how are you doing? I'm good. I heard in in your area you had like fifty thousand cases a day yesterday. Yeah, but we're Why still alive. Yeah, but okay. If you stay in the office, it you are you are protected. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 for sure. That's good. Exactly. Can, can, can't you create a nice deluge script and finish the problem? Come on, Daniel. Uh, do yeah, something. yeah, we have to do something now. We saw <laughs> yeah, exactly a small script. We figure out the problem. That's it. Yeah, just uh, everybody wants to return to how it was before. No, hmm. yeah, it will take some time. Man. Okay, but uh, until there, we will fix the Soho and we will make uh, this world nice. And, That's right. Um, that's nice also. That's right. So I'm very interested in this. Uh, as the customers, they don't read emails. We, uh, it's a little bit, uh, they want to communicate with WhatsApp. But with mm -hmm. WhatsApp, you have the problem. 
uh, this web WhatsApp doesn't work very well. And I want to have all the information what my team did speak with the customer and vice versa. So um, you told in your YouTube videos that there is coming uh, integrated WhatsApp feature from Soho. That's is right. this coming close? Is this cool? Is there no some more information? <laughs> no one knows. Um, sometimes they will give us uh, some information. Uh, this, for example, this uh, system that they have here, it's a uh, it's a system that built for early access. Anything that is early access will be automatically. Messages is not here, uh, so not, no no really news for the WhatsApp integration. My guess that they will release it in the Q1 of 2022. This is just a guess. I don't know. They, yeah. they are saying, when I talk to Zoe, they're saying that they already started with a, a early release on a phased approach. Mm. But there is just no way for me to know anything else. Sorry. Yeah, but this will be a deal changer because the customers, they, they prefer to speak with whatsapp and yep but until now whatsapp is so complicated because you have to give fast responses and uh, do you have a uh, number by the way you have a whatsapp commercial number i i started the process and i uh, gave up but i will i will get it i think yes St start the process at least have the number before this module comes because it takes about two months to get the number mm. So start the process. Yeah, finish the process. <laughs> or finish the process, yeah. But it's, imagine yeah. that right now you will have it in your system. You can't use it anyway. You need to wait two months. So start the process or continue the process. Okay. Cool. Okay. Send Feliz Navidad. And next year we see us here in Mallorca. Okay. Have a beautiful day, my friend. See you. Bye-bye. I saw your... Uh your company logo on their website. Um, it, it's a software that allows you to uh, build and automate relationships between- uh, This is the one? Child. No, that's not it. Uh, if you do workflow, W-E-S Zoho, it'll come up. W-E-S Zoho? Yeah, let me see if I can find her. Let's see, where is their logo? Uh, Blueroot.ca. Those? Yes. They're Zoho partners. Yeah, so they have some software. You can automate the relationship between parent and child records. From the videos, it looks like a pretty nice set of software and just simplifies things significantly. I just didn't know. I, before I installed it, I didn't want to you know, mess anything up. Um, I I know Massimo. Massimo is a great guy, brilliant, uh, uh, brilliant person. So yeah. he wouldn't release. I don't know the extension. I think uh, mid last year I met with him about it. I never saw the product working, but I would guess that if Massimo released something, it's good. He's a solid guy. I mean, the, it looks very impressive what it can do and um, how simple the user interface. It looks like a great piece of software. Uh, I just don't want to blow anything up right now. Look, uh, I don't know much about the final solution. I know what he was trying to achieve. And I know the guy is, is solid. Massimo is awesome. I know him for many years. Cool, then uh, I'll give it a try. I'll let you know what I, what I find. Yeah, worth trying. For sure. He's, he's a good guy. I think also the extensions that we promote on the channel and relationships, it always starts with the person in charge. If if there is a solid person on top, usually the service is good, the solutions are good. Otherwise, they won't release you know a product. But he's, he's great. He's a great guy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm very well. Thanks. How are you doing? Awesome, thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay, uh, I've got a, hopefully a simple question. Apart from the contact form which one can create in Zoho 
and link it to your website, can one with it create an additional form? Uh, a, a brief explanation is, I've got a service where clients must submit additional records where they have to scan it in and email it to me. But I want to create a, a form for this specific service, uh, hopefully on Zoho, but link to my website where they can go to my website or even Zoho where I can send them a link and upload all of those forms and then just send it back to me. Uh, so I don't want to make use of too many emails because that can just drag and drag alone. So usually Zoho form will be used for this purpose. That's usually how, you know, what most people are doing. So you create a Zoho form. You will have in the form the different details that you like, whatever it is. And then in the integration section, you connect it to Zoho CRM. Okay. And you can create any fields and people are also al allowed to upload documents the way that I designed the form. I don't know what you designed, but yeah, you can click here on file upload. And yeah, then exactly. You can design, you can basically instruct the system what type of information will be uploaded, if it's mandatory, how many fields, let's say the minimum they can upload one, the maximum will be five. So you have you have some abilities here. It's not perfect, but it's a, it's a nice system. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. This answers my question. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Morning, Nima. How's everything? Good, sir. How are you today? <laughs> All right. Good. Um, so yeah, my question was on Gantt chart. So um, I wanted to see if there's any way we can add like a, a Gantt chart um, in the deals module to basically manage all of our deals. Um, a calendar just isn't enough for us. And we've tried using the Zoho projects uh, for it because it does have a nice little feature, but um, it was just a little too much to have to create projects on top what, of it. One um, second, Oscar, what do you mean gain chart on deals? So um, yeah, basically we, we have, um, I guess a good way of saying it would be like work orders that we'll have for uh, any deal. And these work orders will span a couple of days or, you know, they, they, they take up different amount of time. Uh, are you familiar with a Gantt chart uh, layout? In projects. Yeah, I've seen something in projects, but we were looking to not use the projects because we, um, the projects is just a little too much for what we're doing uh, mm -hmm. with these work orders. So I was just trying to see if we can have a simpler solution uh, for Gantt charts. And so this is this is what I know about the Gantt charts. So you can basically plan the project, right? Exactly. You can create some uh, you can create some uh, relationship between them. When this is start, this will end. The thing is with uh, uh, CRM is not really a project management system. Um, what you can do. If you can create, yeah, we can do something. It won't be a Gantt chart, right? Because the, the use of a Gantt chart is when something opens, something closed and so on. So it won't be the same, but you can order the different deals based mm -hmm. on a specific daytime. So you will have your special field just called Gantt time and then you can sort by this specific field. I will just write your due date or there is no due date. Is there any, yeah, there is date field. Yeah, so you can, you can just try to have some kind of a date field, maybe that will work and just order them this way. Will that something that work for you? Uh, well, we're trying to see how um, our resources are allocated, you know, the different teams and what projects they're working on. Um, but the projects just seem like a little too much for what we need because they're not really task-driven projects. Uh, but 
I don't know with Zo how you can do it. The only thing that comes to mind, you have here the, the CRM calendar and from here you can see, you know, multiple people and then you can see their availability. Zo CRM is not really a tool for that. Again, um, with my knowledge, I don't see how you can see availability or things like that is out of the box. It just, the system is not built for that. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Uh, <laughs> We're trying to make it do something that it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, what Everything you said so far sounds like Zoho projects, right? Because you have the, the availability of, of, of manpower, uh, resource mm -hmm. utilization, all that is stuff that is already in Zo projects. Yeah, we might we might end up just using Zoho projects. It just seemed like most of our projects are not very task driven, you know, individual little things, kind of like Zoho projects is set up to be. So I was just mm -hmm. trying to see uh, without having to create, you know, individual steps or stuff like that. Um, but I think maybe projects will be something we'll have to implement. Yeah, I think you, you you get more of what you want with projects than other Zo tools, or maybe sometimes Zo is not the right solution, and and you need to look for something else. It's also a possibility. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, me again. And uh, with workflows, uh, it's very pretty nice and everything, but sometimes. Yeah, you don't know if it's really working because there's no historic uh, data where you can see if the uh, workflow is working good. There is, there is something. Uh, let me just check. You see view usage? Wait. Wait. Yes. Yeah, so the, the view usage is, is the one that will keep the, the information. It's just uh, this is a test system and it's not that interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but in Flow, is, they made it so nice and something like this would true. be great. Yeah, so here you can you can see something like that. So you can see the, the history. Ah, okay. Customer Last range. 90 days. Again, this is a test system. You won't see much action here. It's boring. For the people that don't know, that's what Daniel said. In Zo flow, when you're going to the a flow and you click on history, uh, yeah, you will see something like that. You can see the when those flows got executed, and if you click on them, you can also see the output and the input. So basically, if something fails, you can click and you can see why it fails. And that's something that Daniel probably like to have on Zoho CRM. Probably I would too, but it's not available. And can you show again in the Zoho CRM? Because I might sure. have did. Absolutely. So you go to the workflow rules. Uh -huh. Okay, you click on a relevant flow. And then on the bottom, it says view uh, usage on the right uh, bottom. BN, okay, okay. And then you will see the history. Uh, let me check my life system on the other side. I want to see if you get good information from all that. Which one? And okay. Um, not really. It's yeah. just showing you how many times it was executed, how many failures. Nothing okay. too special. Yeah. Nothing too not, special. Not interesting. Mm. 
and in workflows uh, as a question i made like 10 conditions and then it stopped you cannot uh, put more conditions that's right can i then start uh, a new rule a new workflow and just go on with 11 12 and whatever this was on email with uh, outgoing uh, yeah you, you can and the trick is you cannot initiate a workflow from a workflow so if for example you will have here uh, let's just change that that will be flow number one okay and let's see on creation you have here some things here and then eventually you have your like your eight or nine conditions and uh -huh. eventually you updating a field and the field will be past conditions one and then there will be another workflow that will say if past condition one is yes continue here you understand yeah that would not work because you cannot initiate a workflow from a workflow so the trick no. is mm -hmm. that you have here, instead of that, you have here in the field update, you update a daytime field. So past flow one on specific date, which is now. And the second workflow will take place 15 minutes after Maybe. flow one. And this is the trick. This is how you can do it. Mm -hmm. Cool. And... Uh... For example, I have a flow from email subject lines, and then it should take some actions. Um, if mm -hmm. I do now two workflow rules, flow one, mm -hmm. flow two, is it uh, is uh, can I be sure that he will check all the rules I have in, in workflows, or I have to order it in a special way that he uh, that's a system that's all the flows one flow is processing some conditions and eventually it will update the field this field can be updated only by the workflow make sense mm -hmm. yeah the other workflow the second workflow is kicking in only if this field is updated yeah this is uh i'm not so complicated uh also um engineering um i just want to be sure that if i have 10 rules mm -hmm. it will not forget one rule because it is uh, not in the right the same table <laughs> let me let me show you So you have your workflow number one, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So that that goes to flow number two. What you explained, I I I got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So if those nine passed, only then those will kick in. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you have your nine conditions. If those yeah. nine conditions are passing, it will go to flow two. In flow two, you can have another set of conditions. And then you're sending the email. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So then I can be sure that it, it will work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. I did it many times. Yeah, that, cool. Again, with, with Zo, sometimes you need to be creative to move from those challenges. So we also had conditions, like 15 conditions. Okay, how do we do that? It's impossible. So you just work like that. You just, you know, have one workflow calling a different workflow, but that will be based on a, a daytime field. Mm -hmm. 
Ja, yeah, I know it's fantastic. Uh, all my team, they are in love with Soho. We, we arrange very, uh, very much things. Thanks to your course I made in, uh, in the beginning of the year. The automate, automate, automation course. I can re really recommend. That's right. That's right. You did the, yeah. We did only, only two automation workshops and that's it. Uh, may, maybe 2022 will do more. You, you feel that it helped you with, you know, with yeah. the task? This okay. was fantastic. It was the other thinking about the system. Uh, in uh, gratis, it comes some business ideas. It comes uh, how you can yeah, make it easier. It was really good. And next year, I will sign up also for the other courses you, you awesome. mentioned. Thank you. And this is really a help for us, for my team, for my clients. And um, yeah, we have more time for awesome. other things. This is uh, fantastic. Awesome. In February, we're starting Deluge. So Deluge can connect with your automation knowledge. It's very yeah. powerful. Yeah, and there I think this would be great just to be right that I choose the right uh, thing. Uh, I'm an, a no coder. I'm just good with logic sometimes, sometimes not. Um, but and you said this is for business owners that want. It's not for developers. To... Yeah, it's not, if, it's not for developers. It's for people that are not developers, business owners, managers, zoo administrators, not for developers. Cool. Yeah, then it's cool. Okay, my friend. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Bye bye. So, guys. Uh, thank you very much for jumping today to this uh, session. I will see you next week. Have a safe and beautiful day.